Greetings, Noose Little Pod listeners. This is your host, Matt Gore, reminding you to please like, follow, subscribe, and share the podcast on your available podcast apps such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and any other podcast app you can think of. Share our episodes on Facebook and let us know what you think with a comment or review. Now please enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to Noose Little Podcast. This is an audio program talking about the backstage antics and stories of running a small town community theater on the banks of the Noose River located in Smithfield, North Carolina. We lovingly refer to the old girl as the hut. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to Noose Little Podcast. We have a special episode for you. This is the Boeing Boeing cast and crew. The table is full today. I think this is the most we've ever had on a podcast, Mm -hmm. but since our cast has only six people we wanted to offer everybody a chance to get in there as it were except for our beloved uh mariana morin who is uh recovering from uh, a sickness which we will (laughs) touch on later (laughs) but suffice to say i'm very happy to be sitting with these people i'm going to go around counterclockwise and introduce them right now sitting to my immediate right is the wonderful beautiful what's your name darling (laughs) <laughs> Into the mic. Come on now. <laughs> Sequilla Arita. All right. And making her uh, third appearance on the podcast, the wonderful and talented... Teresa Rose. Yes. Welcome back, madam. Making his second appearance. He's back. He's the man from the north. The mysterious uh, mysterioso. <laughs> he is... Randall Lawrence Hurd. There we go. And then, <laughs> this is almost back-to-back for you because we had you on two podcasts ago. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of those, folks. We just got done with the speed through and we were cackling the entire time. But you are, madam. Kathy Nixon. Thank you for coming back. And we have back for the third time. She is now director of this quote-unquote grown-up show. We have... <laughs> Patsy Castellano. More syllables than humans should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, we did this a little differently than we've done on the podcast because it's been a busy time for everybody. I'm in this show, so uh, the rehearsal schedule, even though that has actually been quite lax, it's just been taking up most of my time, if not for being here and for staying at home memory, memorizing 300 lines. So we're going to talk to Patsy first about the play itself. Uh, I guess first we should say that we did get a little turned around on the on the dates. We did one uh, Friday last uh, weekend, or weekend, and then the next night, unfortunately, one of our casts got sick. I'll give you 10 bucks if you can figure out who it is. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but unfortunately, we had to reschedule our Saturday and Sunday show. So we added on a Thursday show. That's going to be on the 17th, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have Friday the 18th, Saturday the 19th. All those are at 8 o'clock. And then we've added a Sunday matinee at 3 So please call and reserve your tickets and come out and see this really funny show. It was so, (laughs) it was so anticlimactic uh, to start out on a really strong Friday night and then immediately like, okay, we're not doing this for three days or four days. Um, So it's really good to get back kind of into the flow of things. But okay, we're actually doing it again. It's okay. We're doing it again. It's fine. It's cool. Um, But let's talk to Patsy about what the play is about. Ah, The play is about a man that lives in Paris. He's an architect and he's well-to-do. He is so well-to-do that he has three, count them, three fiancés. They are all airline stewardess and he manages to keep them apart because they are all at different airlines and they're flying here, hither and yon and uh, they have not met yet. Well, his best friend Robert shows up from West Kansas, mm-hmm. and uh, Robert it, it ends up having to untangle the mess that happens when they all get either weather problems mm-hmm. or super jets, and they start showing up at the same time. With the help of his uh, lovely uh, assistant slash maid, Berta, who's actually juggling, all, helping to juggle all the chaos backstage. Um, now, Sequilla, you play one of the three fiancés, as it were. Now, which one do you play? I play Gloria, the American. Okay, and so what is your character like? Like she's uh, she's the first fiance we see with Bernard, so she is um, she is a mix of some things. She is very <laughs> sweet. She is also very dominant. Um, she's a take charge New Yorker. Um, she has a firm belief that the man makes the money and the woman gives the orders. And that's the way it's supposed to be. No, nah, no argument? None. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we have uh, the next fiancé, and that's played by the lovely Teresa Rose. And tell us a, bit, a little bit about the fair Gabriella. I am Gabriella from Italy. Mm-hmm. It- land, airline Italia. 
it's been uh, really wonderful to play this part. I, I see her as, she, she just sees Bernard as only how she wants to see him, that he is hers alone and he, he would never go after anyone else. She has no inkling that he would even think about anyone else. Lord Gabriel. But she, <laughs> I won't tell you how it ends, but she is a good lady. <laughs> <laughs> she is the most, probably the most decent. I don't know. They're, uh, Gretchen and Gabrielle are, are pretty decent. Yeah, but Gloria, Gloria, we learn within the play, has uh, has motives of her own the whole time. She's just very uh, business oriented. Yes, yes. <laughs> she cares about that bottom line. And... Uh, <laughs> The man responsible for all this care, uh, uh, chaos is sitting across the table from me. Uh, uh, Randy, tell us a little bit about your character, Bernard. Sure, uh, Bernard, as I prefer <laughs> to call him. Uh, I don't know. He's a he's obviously a well-to-do, successful architect, well-educated, doing quite well for himself, and I I think he thinks of himself as not that bad of a guy. You know, it's one of those things as an actor you try to find something to like about your character. I think Bernard really has just not really thought through the consequences of his actions and he doesn't he honestly doesn't think anyone's getting hurt. Everyone is happy and it can just go on this way forever. Uh, and then he abruptly finds out that that is not the case. Interesting. Um uh, well, all right, so you, Kathy, are helping Bernard manage all this chaos by being his maid, and there is some debate on whether he uh, or whether Berta was one of the original. Do you think that she was originally uh, attached with him? Because I know it says she came with the apartment, but at the end, it's it's revealed that she might have been also an air hostess. Also, oh my God, I never. <laughs> I don't think so. Because I think uh, Ber Berta would not have anything to do with Bernard. She's just there because she's there. It's too much trouble to leave, and you know. You played this character with a French accent, and you were telling me uh, backstage about you had a French teacher that you were excited to come see this one. Yeah, Phyllis Paris was my French teacher in high school. She was and everybody's French teacher. I know. <laughs> She's the greatest teacher in Johnson County <laughs> that's ever been, so um, I'm pretty much doing her. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Was she actually from France? No, but she talks like it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Gotcha. She, she, she would teach class like this all the time, so that's it. All right. And now, and we also have one more fiance, and played by Mariana, and she's German, and that's Gretchen. And she's uh, actually the more, the most emotional of the three. Uh, she's the one that's most up and down. She's either loving you, uh, uh, kissing you, or she's yelling at you and asking. <laughs> Asking to see your papers. She's German. After all. <laughs> um, and then you have uh, me, uh, Robert, which is kind of like he he comes in and then the plot actually starts because he kind of at first is very nervous about Bernard's kind of plan here with these three fiancés. But then slowly but surely he comes around to the idea and slowly but surely he becomes kind of adept at it. Uh, by the end, maybe someone say more adept at than Bernard with the actual juggling of it all, but it is a weird part. I, I, this is all a weird. It's a, we should say that this is a script that is translated from an uh, an Italian farce. It's by Mark Camelotti, and then two Americans translated it, and it was redone on Broadway some time ago. Um, so there is sometimes some mistranslation in the lines, and you kind of have to figure it out for yourself while still being true to the text. Uh, so there's a little bit of that, but as far as actually figuring out the character and his place and all things, I guess he's just, he's just the guy that stirs the pot, the guy that's, who's not supposed to be there that happens to be there and that type of deal. But I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he was not there, I think it would unravel faster. You think? But yeah. Cause he sort of is the director of, of, of things going on. Oh, I like that. Um. <laughs> no, I meant because, like, he keeps them sort of, for as long as possible, sort of keeps them in, in their space. Robert does take over suspiciously fast. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember that I was worried that uh, I, I kind of, I kind of, months ago, I told you that, oh, you should come out and audition for this, Randall. It'll be really good for you. Kind of need, like, a handsome lead. It seems up your alley. And then I decided to audition for it after that. And I had my eye on the Robert part. And I suggested that, oh, yeah, you should, uh, Randall should read for the Bernard part. And then I was worried that after everything was cast and all that, Patsy was kind enough to cast this. I'm like, oh, man, he's worried that I think I bamboozled him or something. <laughs> but I, <laughs> and then I saw how many lines you had to memorize. I was like, no, this is fine. This I'm is totally fine with this. <laughs> probably the most lines I've ever had to learn. Definitely in more, uh, definitely in 10 years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's, but luckily enough, uh, like one-third of the lines are just uh, 
cat calls of what people actually just say <laughs> before me. Yeah. So yes. There's a lot of repeating. A lot, a lot of quick back and forth. Well, let's talk about the set. While well, we have it, uh, let's talk about the set uh, quickly because this set has more doors on it than I've ever seen on a set at NLT before. It's more doors than sets. So tell us a little bit about that, Patsy. Yeah. Originally, the one that I picked out from looking at several different ones that Mita was kind enough to find online, the one that I liked had eight doors. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> welcome to community theater. We had four doors that were alike. So I started thinking, well, how can we do this and have all these openings and not use all those doors? And so we've we've adjusted some things. Uh, it uh, The set could have used some millwork, but instead we did some creative painting that kind of gave, gave the stage that same height of the doors. We wanted it to look like a French apartment, so I went with a French blue color, and we've used some gold trim. We have sconces and a chandelier and some elegant furniture, but older furniture because it takes place in the early 60s and it's a Parisian apartment, so we really didn't need mid-century modern furniture. We could get away with a hodgepodge of things that we had. Uh, we have a beautiful red rug that contrasts great with the, the blue walls and the dark blue floor, which I've been jonesing for since the beginning of me looking at this play. And um, we're using a, a, a wide opening for the main for the main uh, entrance and then all the ladies have a specific door that they go in and out of. There's a bathroom and a dining room, all of those things. What else did you have in mind? No, you, that was great. That was okay. actually a really good <laughs> rundown of what we have here on the set. Um, uh, when you saw, when you said you took a look at the script and when you saw initially, what was, what did you think was going to be the biggest challenge? And now having kind of done it, that even though we still have performances, your job's kind of quote unquote done as it were. Um, what was the biggest challenge? Figuring out which door was which, because the the uh, play, like you said, it's an ad adaptation and it's, it's a translation. Yes, and it's, it does not help you. <laughs> no, the script was very short on saying which room was what. It was just door one, door two, door three. And so I had to read it carefully and then read it again in order to decipher which door was the main bedroom, which door was the bathroom, et cetera. And once I got that straight, then I realized that there were next to no stage directions in this play. <laughs> so, but then, then that left it wide open for what went on in my head. And I tried very hard not to look at things online so that I kept an idea of, of what, it, what I was imagining as I was reading it. And I got the greatest cast in the world. <laughs> you're all professional, you all have great comedic chops, and you are all uh, handled your lines, you've learned lines so fast, it's been amazing. And let's not forget who's sitting here at the table. Mita Tool, <laughs> NLT's Board of Director President, was kind enough to accept the assistant director position. So it's been fabulous to have her as a mentor, as well as having her creative and outstanding cast. Well, you ask about biggest challenge that once we got started, the biggest challenge was I had five great men audition for two parts. And then I had nobody of the female persuasion show up on night number one, which was frightening. And then I had two very good people show up, Sequilla and Kathy, for night number two. And Teresa came because she heard I was in trouble. And that was <laughs> awesome. So that's three. And then uh, we thought, what to do for number four, the fourth lady. And Mita and I put our heads together and we thought about someone and tried this and tried that. And then someone, Kathy, I think, possibly Teresa also, put out the call for Mariana. Thank goodness, because mm -hmm. I can't imagine a, a Gretchen better than Mariana. She's Bribed absolutely Mariana amazing. So well, you bribed her? <laughs> bribed Mariana With what? I don't know. How'd you bribe her? Well, she had um, just done one, so it's like, of course, right. Kathy had Well, two, that was so. it. I mean, I had there had there was three people that had promised with their soul that they would audition for this play, and then they did not. And but um, Mary Anna had just <laughs> Mary Anna had just posted on Facebook that oh, I so I'm so sorry that I can't audition for this play because my family would leave me or something like that. And so I did. And she decided that wasn't a concern. <laughs> <laughs> Then she spent a couple of nights with him, and she went, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of the house. <laughs> so anyway, my many thanks to the people who bailed me out in order to get a good cast. Well, I definitely think this is a good cast, if I do say so myself. We have, we have people here that are dedicated to this weird little play. And we said it, I remember saying that back uh, off stage on the porch one night. They're like, I, I can't imagine six people committing more to this play in particular. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, because it, it is, it, while 
there's it's like Patsy said, there's some things you have to figure out for yourself. And sometimes that doesn't happen until three weeks in a rehearsal. I'm like, oh, that's why that's there. Okay, I got you. I got you. But let's talk about more you guys. Did you, what was the biggest challenge for you coming into all this? Um, mm, I think it was just figuring out how I wanted to be Gloria. Like, my natural instinct is to be very uh, sweet, mm. self-spoken, quiet. But uh, Gloria's not that, and she has to she has to speak from her chest, and I don't like to do that. So <laughs> I think that's my hardest thing is to tapping into my uh, more direct side to be Gloria. Right. Did you enjoy the uh, fashion aspect of it? I know you were a fashionista. Uh, you usually wear stuff to rehearsal that's more elaborate than your actual costume. <laughs> so did you enjoy that aspect of this production? I did. I always love that part for every character that I play is literally learning. I literally was watching 1960 flight attendant videos. Like they're, <laughs> they're hiring commercials and being like, Oh, so this is, this is what Handing they do. the pilot a drink. <laughs> 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 I watched, I researched and I read uh, papers about them. To yeah, smoking, learn about it. smoking yeah. on the plane. Yeah. 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 Learn how to fly a plane. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, interesting. All right, so Teresa, what was your kind of biggest challenge coming into all this? Because you played Italian before. This is not the first time that you were you played uh, at a, almost a very same character in Lemia Tenor. It was Maria, uh, the if, wife. Mm -hmm. Yes, of Tito Morelli, who's also very, uh, very passionate. She's full of great passion and stuff like great that. Great passion. I think all Italians have great passion. <laughs> um, it was more challenging this time because I just have a lot more lines mm -hmm. than I did in that play. That was came on at the very beginning and at the end, I think, in Let Me a Tenor. Yes, you had, yes. And this one, I'm in all three acts. And there, and it's just, it, a farce is always challenging because you find yourself entering or leaving through a same door. Mm -hmm. Well, which line do, am I saying this time? I'm coming into this door the same way that I do all the time. Is this the first act? Is this the second act? Is this the third act? Oh no, there's someone coming through a door. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> and then it's not the right time. But um, that's been the biggest challenge for me is, is just getting the lines this time. I am not 25 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sneaky... I told Patsy that like before our first rehearsal. I was like, this is actually a sneaky hard script. Like You uh -huh. could be complacent and be like, oh, it's fine. We'll figure it out. I was like, no, you gotta be on top of this the entire time because there's a lot of stuff that goes back and forth. Bernard, uh, tell us a little bit about that, Randy, where, where there's just an insane amount of like timing and back and forth that has yeah. to be fast. It's, it's an interesting play in that it's got several chunks of just hefty speeches. People have like an entire paragraph they're talking, and a lot of what they're saying is the same thing over and over again because they're, they're panicked or whatever. And then it'll break into four people on the stage at the same time, and everybody has a line one after the other. And it's, it's super fast um, to get through. And th those are always the... The hardest, the hardest lines for me. You can memorize a, I can memorize a page, uh, uh, no problem. But getting four people to all memorize their lines, and it's not just memorize your lines. You have to memorize everyone else's yeah, lines. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. you have to memorize, and you have to have the timing down perfect, or it just doesn't work. And you really have to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't drift in this play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to truly be, in it, which is a good thing. Like, yeah, I can really pull you into the character. It can, it can really get you interested in in how to make this funny, which is. Something I've been really impressed with how everyone in the cast has done. We've turned a, a good play into a very funny play. We've done yeah. a lot of work on this. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair thing to say. Where uh, some of the jokes in the play, I'm just, mm, it's, <laughs> but the way it's a very it's a very performance based kind of comedy, mm -hmm. where it's not like these are good one liners that are going to be easy to land. Where you kind of have to find the joke and sell it in the middle of it, don't you think, Kathy? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, with Berta, there's a lot of them like that. Like, is this a joke? Okay, I'm gonna make it into I'll a make joke. It a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it came to like, when it came to like creating those moments, what was the process for you? Oh, just to make it funny. Yeah. Uh, well, a, a lot of times with Bertha, it comes from the accent, you know, to make it funny. And that was that was the hardest part for me actually is the fast lines and the damn R's. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the R's that this person who translated it put in there for me. They're really <laughs> hard. So some of the lines. It's hard to say a French R because you have to say like, uh, uh. Um, but uh, for me, it was the, uh, one of my favorite parts is the farce is the repetition because the more repetition, the more people start laughing at it because they know it's coming. And mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of those little lines in there, especially Berta. So, and she hates everybody. Yes. So that's always funny. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, but as far as hating everyone, I'm surprised. But this group is uh, really bonded, and, and we. I've, I've said several times I've had I've, uh, as, as good a time on this play as I've had in, in a long time, a long mm-hmm. time. And because I can't, I think we really bonded over that. Where it goes like, we got to try to kind of like make this this part funny. We got to make this part funny. We got to we got to figure out the joke and the chemistry there. And I think for the most part we did. There's there's still some jokes that we do every now and just like I don't get this one, but okay, <laughs> it's in the script, you know. Like, but but then there there are jokes we do like we don't think it's funny, and then uh, Friday night, opening night, the audience was dying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what do we do? There's a exactly. twist at the end that I didn't think would get that crazy of a laugh, but oh my god, they loved it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but it, it's kind of like a trial and error thing. It, but you, the thing is, you have actors that are good enough that can try stuff like that. And that's what I think we've been really lucky with because you guys' comedic chops are really, really sharp. And so we uh, had to cancel our. What was your. <laughs> I remember I went through a bevy of emotions after. <laughs> our, after <laughs> I did. Because Saturday was my birthday, November 12th, oh, and that was yeah. the day that everything. We have to cancel this weekend. And I remember reading it, and it just didn't. I remember Patsy sent me a text, and I just didn't. I just didn't acknowledge it. <laughs> didn't acknowledge it. I had to work that day, so I went to work. I had like, nothing's happening. It's fine. And I went home, and just like, I guess I'll watch a little bit of TV. And, play. and then that night is when it really happened. That's when I got angry. <laughs> and then I got over it. And But coming back here today, Day with you guys and doing doing the speed through again made, made my brain be like okay it's fine we're gonna do it we're gonna do it you know it's so fingers crossed you know? <laughs> how did you feel Pat because I know you were devastated oh my gosh I was so deflated it was it was really sad and I felt really bad but like Mita had mentioned earlier I mean it's this it's just a different world now and the whole the show must go on thing has, has just gone by the wayside because it's, it's just a different time and we just have to acknowledge the 21st century and figure out other ways to survive. So for all of those of you that were disappointed that we had to cancel those first two shows, we're picking them back up this coming yes. week and everyone is well and we're all happy to be back. This show will get a, uh, we'll get a, Knock on wood, a full run, just like all of, all five of our other shows, and I think that's really important. We uh, because I, I think we we've kind of contributed a really good show to this to this season. You know, I know I'm in the cast and I'm terribly biased. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it it has felt like a really good uh, a really good something that I wasn't hundred percent sure about on the outset that has now kind of morphed into one of my favorite plays that I've done. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of really special. Well, that's, that's really just it. The, the response that we got from that opening night audience, and it was a small audience. We had hurricane winds and, and rain, and so yes. we had quite a few uh, cancellations, but the audience was so receptive and so ready to laugh, and it was just a good experience. Mm-hmm. It's also one of those situations where, like, I mean, obviously... Anytime you do a play, you put a lot of work into it and you want people to see it and appreciate it. But we have put a lot of work into this play. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but also, it's a super physical play. We're running around yeah. the stage right. all the time. It, it, it's yeah. exhausting. You've it's, helped out because uh, it, I think in the play, it's meant that uh, Robert is a little bit more physical, a little bit more ra- wacky. I remember there being one of the few actual stage notes is that, yeah. that Robert... Mm-hmm. To cover up uh, the contents of some, of someone's bag, where one of the fiancés isn't supposed to see, I have to jump on a coffee table <laughs> and just kind of land on it and go sideways like uh-huh. like a. Uh, uh, the girl from Titanic style, <laughs> and I'm just like, that's not gonna work. Um, but I do thank you, Bernard, and the other ladies as well, to try to like help up for my lack of physicality. You know, I just see you jumping across the the couch every night. I'm just like, hmm, that helps. <laughs> I didn't, you know what I liked about it was that you could be the funny person and the straight person. You know what I mean? Like you, because in, as we've come along, you know, it's not just like with a lot of plays. You're like, well, that's my funny line. I'm gonna say my funny line. Right. But then as you start going, if you think somebody Else, could, it, you know, you feel that they're going to get a bigger laugh, then you can set it up for them. There, and so, yeah. you know, I feel like all, all of us do that. We, mm-hmm. You know, we'll the, take a laugh, but then we'll set it up for somebody mm-hmm. else to the, get we're, We read off each other. That's yeah. like for real. Like, we, I've been part of cast that communication is very difficult. It is really wonderful on this cast. Yeah. Like, as soon as Randall's eye twitches, or as soon as you make a different move, I'm just like, okay, I've got to go with her. I've got to go with you. And the same thing as vice versa, where we just pick you up each other really fast. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, I think so. It's very collaborative. Oh, God. The whole yeah. experience has been very collaborative. Yeah, I, I felt, if I say at times it felt like a, a comedy writer's room instead of like an actual play you're rehearsing. <laughs> it's also one of those plays where like there's not a traditional, this character is funny, and this character is the straight character, mm-hmm. or whatever. 
everyone has moments where they're they're clueless and they're straight and they're the butt of the joke, and then everyone has moments where they're crazy and saying the funny right. lines. Everyone has their at least one usually yes. multiple yeah. moments. Everyone has a great moment in the play where uh, it, it's just it is a very balanced script where there are arcs to care like oh characters have arcs um, <laughs> <laughs> where. Robert isn't the same guy at the end of the play as he was in the beginning, and Bernard isn't the same guy, and none of the characters are the same uh, through through your uh, plotting or through your engagement <laughs> or or anything else. Anything else you guys want to say? And before we close it out here, uh, we'll keep it short and sweet. We're releasing these podcasts as they come, as we have stuff to stay instead of a rigid every two week scenario, because you know. I don't want to get Reggie in here for like a fourth time. It's like, <laughs> so I'd rather, so me and me uh, agreed that it's better for everybody if we just do it when we have a show or we have something to say. So it'll be one of those every now and then type of things. And I think that's better for everybody. Um, does it, I, but, go ahead. I, I know. I was going to say, I do want to say that I was very impressed with how professional everybody came in. Because I've never done a show before where the cast basically the first week were trying to be off book already. I was very impressed. Yes. I I was really worried because it is very wordy and it's very fast. It's like a lot of pacing and all this sort of stuff. And you guys came in like, okay, I'm going to try it off book. Because, you know, you did act one the first week and then you're doing act two. It's like, I went... I'm not worried anymore. <laughs> no, me and Kathy had a unspoken rivalry at we the did. beginning before I discovered I <laughs> had did. way more lines than she did. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, where it was no. just, I had heard, because I, I always hear, like, well, Kathy's always off book, and I'm just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those plays where you kind of have to be off book as soon as possible. You have to, yeah. No, you have to. If what, it, it, we. We sharpened each other. Iron sharpens mm-hmm. iron, and we got be- we got better because like, oh, Kathy's learned this iron. Fine enough, let's go home. And, <laughs> and, and then, from my point of view, as I watched you try to remember lines from the beginning, I also noticed no one was writing down their blocking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to feel it out, Patsy. I have to I have to be on the stage. I have to be in the moment. You know, I only remember so much. Okay. <laughs> But I would like to thank all of you because you made my first experience as a director really great. more of an organizer, I think, than a director. But thank you so much. And to, to our sweet Mariana as well, who can't be with us tonight. Yeah, we miss you. Yes, Mariana. we love you, Mariana. Thank you. Uh, we're sorry. Uh, I, I, she, she probably should have been on the podcast for a murder is announced too uh i'm sorry if you are in a play the next play you're in i promise you have the first slot come do the next one mariana come on i can talk you into it and i do have to say patsy is probably the most organized director yeah i've ever worked with. what <laughs> yeah I'm, she is i mean you walk in to be you know i was thinking i need you mean this <laughs> wow wow you found that obscure prop already okay wow. uh, no she is ve- i'm very impressed with that with uh with patsy's work on this i just wanted to treat you like i like to be treated so that was it and we appreciate it, yeah, it, it yeah. there was there's never been a moment there's never been a moment of negativity during these process of these rehearsals and stuff like, there's been moments of trial and error and figuring things out but as a whole, we've all gelled really, really well. It's been fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I just want to thank Patsy for the opportunity because I, this is a point, a point in the pandemic and a point in life where I just really needed something creative. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for that opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you for coming out. Working with Teresa is always working with somebody that is full of class and grace. She always brings that to the table. So it's been great working with her again. It's been a while. I think 10 years, eight mm-hmm. years is, since we've worked together on a play. And Sequilla, the lovely Sequilla, even though we never get to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> you've made it a, you've made it every, when you actually do the play, it's like, hey, I can see Sequilla's face. <laughs> it's so pretty. And the consummate Kathy Nixon, um, uh, I fi- we finally get to share some scenes together. We've yeah. been circling each other for a couple of years now. We finally <laughs> get to share some actual dialogue in a scene together. You and guys have two of the, one of the best scenes together, I think. Yeah, um, uh, I, I I don't know about that. I, I that's one scene that I do have trouble with because of the timing of the bags. Mm. So the timing of the bag is either going to be good or it's either going to be bad. And that oh, it's never bad. I don't know. About <laughs> that. I, I, it's never bad. It's one of those scenes where if something goes wrong, it just makes it funnier. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I just wait for you to bring those bags and just stare I, at you. Um, <laughs> I understand when you're the actor on stage and something goes wrong, yeah. it's not as fun. <laughs> but watching from the audience, it looks very funny. Well. There have been things that have been like, well, we, we're going to have to 
dropped this kind of gag at the last minute because I just don't think it's smooth. But that gag was in there the whole time because it was in the script, obviously. But I worked kind of hard to make it smooth, and every night it just doesn't work out. I'll, I'll, I'll get a bag too early or something like that. I mean, it's always good, though. But, so nobody knows what yeah, it is. it's really it's like, good. Come watch the show and see if you can guess what gag it is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Come watch the show and see how, uh, see how big I, I mess up. <laughs> But so far, so good. Uh, we've had two shows with audience. I guess you count the Thursday preview last week with two people audiences. Um, with one that never lasted. Yeah, it's just stone-faced the entire time. <laughs> but enjoyed it thoroughly at the end. That, <laughs> he said he did. Rich did, Nixon. Did he come up at the end and go, that was very amusing? That I was very amusing. That. I enjoyed that very much. Yes. I'm giving you my broadest smile. Yes. It's a chortle, everyone. We're talking it's about a chortle. Ri- we're talking about Rich Nixon, mm-hmm. uh, Kathy's husband. <laughs> a very stoic man. But, he is. Strong, very strong supporter of the arts. <laughs> <laughs> strong supporter of the arts. Yes, That's right. Yes. Um, let me know when you're doing a Theodore Roosevelt play. <laughs> 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 um, but <laughs> uh, so we can tell I'm near the end of the, pro- of the podcast because I'm starting to say um too much. <laughs> but <laughs> before we stop, I want to thank everybody. This has been a wonderful experience. We've been laughing the entire time. I want to finish this out laughing the entire time. And I don't see any reason, knock on wood. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing to worry about at all. <laughs> Not at all. No. Smooth sailing. Oh, uh, yes. So I need everybody, as I tell you this when we're cramped together in a, in, upstairs in our room, <laughs> I need you guys to be safe. <laughs> we have everybody. a fan. There's ventilation. <laughs> Everybody, drink out of this water bottle. <laughs> I licked all the microphones. <laughs> you licked all the Good, good. So we can be immune to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Berta spits out her French phrases on everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did that. No, I, I had to stop drinking the ginger ale because whenever I drink the ginger ale and yell something, I could just... Ah, I'm just like, ah. Just missing the audience. <laughs> Which, it was pretty fair. That pretty hot the first night. They probably appreciated it. <laughs> Somehow I don't think so. <laughs> Again? They have to pull a plastic up like Gallagher. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Gallagher. Though, in the, first <laughs> the kids love Gallagher, Pats. <laughs> Gallagher is huge. Yeah, that's, that's a topical reference. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there is not a better source of B-minus comedy <laughs> and fruit smashing in the world. <laughs> if you love well, comedy and hate watermelons. Laugh, Gallagher died two days I know. Ago. That's, 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 that's our topic of the yeah. Don't you see, Patsy, we're dancing on his grave. <laughs> Oh oh, the dirt's not I was, even. I was gonna pull a Stephen and go, leave the man alone. He's dead. <laughs> the world gave Gallagher more than he deserved. Laura <laughs> is looking at us like, all right. So I need to Google this guy when I get home. Do you know, really? who, do you know who Gallagher is? No. You know who I had never heard of him until he died either. Until then. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna, before we close it out, actually, I dated him. No. Okay. <laughs> when he brought out the mallet, you were scared. <laughs> Everybody, here we go. Smash. Like, apparently, he had a comedy routine more than just smashing watermelon yes, with a mallet. And I did not know that. I've only known him. To in the beginning, he was halfway decent. Then I mean, it, all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Sequilla, Sequilla. Gallagher is a comedian from like the early was. 90s. Was. Was. <laughs> yeah, he's dead now. Um, and uh, he, he's still making us laugh. Yes, he's still, he's still bringing us joy from beyond the grave. I'm sure that's the way he would have wanted it. Um, but no, he's... He, he More would, laughs than he ever got He would dress year. like an idiot. He would dress in suspenders and a striped shirt and a little hat on, kind of like the hat Bertie wears at the end of the play. And uh, he would tell you B-minus to C-level jokes. And, but at the end, his big finisher is that he would bring out fruit on stage and smash it with a big old mallet. Uh-huh. And the first three or four rows had this big plastic that they all folded over. And still I'm wondering, sitting there watching old clips of Gallagher, the beloved Gallagher. <laughs> um, uh, I'm watching him just like, that would be a pain in the ass to clean up after a show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was considered Stephen high Roberts. comedy in the 80s. Stephen Roberts, stage manager for Gallagher. I can almost <laughs> tell you the stage hands every time a theater booked and went, shit. Oh, man, not Gallagher again. We were here till 12 o'clock. I That's saw, true. I saw him at Memorial Hall, I think, in 83. Three, 83, 84. That was I believe it was 83. That's the time when he was experimental in shooting the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and he hit the audience, so they had to stop. People were very happy. They brought their own saran wrap. Oh, to, to, to be pelted by the, the, the sticky fruit juice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They paid for that privilege. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Gallagher. Well, this is the Gallagher podcast, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we want to... Uh, that's all right. We're all going to hell. <laughs> We're going to 
<laughs> dedicate to this. Yeah, he was a comedian. It's our com- comedy mentor, Gallagher. <laughs> There's actually more than one Gallagher. His brother stole his act, and it was a big lawsuit for a bunch oh, of years. Oh, wow. my. We'll cover that on the next so, episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you think Gallagher is funny, you have got to come see this show. <laughs> <laughs> you will literally die. <laughs> I'm just sitting there thinking, like, wow, wow, I would have never assumed Matt was the font of Gallagher in her <laughs> Because my, my, I grew up... My it's grandparents raised me, and they love Gallagher, and they were like, "Come in here and see this." And even at like eight or nine, I'm just like, "I'm just like, this is bush league jokes." <laughs> <laughs> this guy has no timing whatsoever. <laughs> but then when he would smash the fruit, I would enjoy it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's enough about Gallagher. <laughs> Come Can see. it ever be? <laughs> Can it ever be? <laughs> I'm just saying, this is Gallagher podcast from now on. Uh, all right. <laughs> Come see probably, Bowen. Well, if you like Puck Gallagher and you like podcasts, there's probably one out there because there's a podcast for everything. Oh, yes, God. there's a podcast that suits any lifestyle choice, any type of entertainment you can think of, anything. Next week, everyone, Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's dead, too. He's actually funny. So, so this is just a podcast about, like, C-level comedians who are dead. <laughs> That is actually a good idea for a podcast. Uh, 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 I would listen to that. <laughs> Somebody see what Jim Belushi's doing. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Is it going too far for Jim Belushi? <laughs> come, on. come on, leave the man alone. Come on, try the line. Let, let him rest in dignity like he never did in real life. <laughs> He gave us 40% and gave him millions of dollars, and now he owns a pot dispensary. It's true. He, Jim Belushi did just fine. All right. That's enough about Jim Belushi. This is the Jim Belushi podcast. This is, this is actually how it's been a lot of the rehearsals where we'll just laugh. And that's true. That, and those are the moments you treasure. You love doing the shows, and it really fuels you, those laughs coming in from that. Um, I don't know about you, but me, I'm like, give it to me, give it to me. I need it. Validation. <laughs> <That's laughs> that's my heroin. That's my heroin. <laughs> you do realize you're not supposed to rub heroin on maybe. your face, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I won't die alone. That explains, that explains a lot. That explains a lot about the show. That explains a lot about that luggage. <laughs> yes. I have become the French connection. <laughs> Another solid reference. Uh, <laughs> Lori has a lot of research to do today. Keep the notes. She just had, it just says old people notes on her. <laughs> Next up, the Popeye Doyle. Gallagher. <laughs> JFK. Gene Hackman. <laughs> All right. We're going to close out here before we, we go off on another tangent that you probably don't want to hear. So if you hung in this long, we salute you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> so if you would like to be part of this sort of chaos, we have an audition coming up in Yes, December. we do. Uh, Monte Carlo is going to be uh, up for audition. <laughs> up for audition. almost looks like I said up for auction. Excuse me. Ah, better than Monte Carlo will be our next show, and that will be directed by Stephanie Viren. And when are those uh, audition dates? The 12th and 13th. December 12th and 13th, but they'll be starting actual rehearsals around the beginning in of the year. the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. correct. So if you want to come be a part of this chaos, please come, please come on down. Learn more about Gallagher. Um, I don't know if that's quite the Gallagher expert that you are. There will be a watermelon smashing competition. Wait, then we might need to rethink this whole thing. <laughs> Sorry to Bugs City by Bubble, who's going to be a Gallagher theater. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sequilla, for being on this podcast. I'm sure you've learned a lot of useful information. <laughs> yes. Thank your you. next Trivia Pursuit night. Yes. Yes, the outdated Trivia Pursuit. It's been in your closet for 18 years. <laughs> the 80s version. Thank you, Teresa, for putting up with our nonsense. Thank we you, Matt. <laughs> thanks for Ran- a lot. Thanks to Randy for joining in on the nonsense. <laughs> Always happy. And thank you for to Kathy for being usually the start of the nonsense. <laughs> which is Always. One, one of the reasons why I love her. I'm just like, hmm, yeah. You, dirty mind, terrible thing to waste. <laughs> and thank you to Patsy for allowing us to do that. I only kept going because no one said stop. <laughs> Just like Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> So that one day, God said, <laughs> God said, okay, that'll be enough now. <laughs> You've given the world you too many gifts. You smashed your last melon. Smashed <laughs> your last melon. Do you think Gallagher knew when it was... something different, I think. Do you think Gallagher knew when it was the last one? He's sitting up there like Johnny Cash. <laughs>
was like, he, he knows. He's standing backstage thinking about it his entire life. Like, what? My poor Smash. Mr. Gallagher, it's time to go on. I know. Just a minute. Cut to the shot. The thoughts and comments about Gallagher is not. <laughs> All right, I gotta stop. So long. This is the Gallagher Podcast. Everybody have a good night. Bye. The show dates are <laughs> November 17th, 18th, 19th at 8 p.m., December 20th at 3 p.m. Call 919-934-1873 to reserve your tickets. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> Credits for the show. Your host and creator is Matt Gore. That's me. My producer and editor is Mita Tool. That's me. Music is by Cody Walker. Uh, please go look up Cody on uh, Cody Walker Music on YouTube. And he's also on Cody Walker Music on Facebook as well. He's local, so uh, and he's got a couple of albums out. You know, uh, Easy listening, John, Vin- John Denver type of uh, guitar voice, that Cody Walker. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.